sure I do. Um, it might have been at, obviously at a local level, but I really don't, which is really sad because it should have been a momentous moment for me and I should remember it forever, but I really don't. And um, that's why I limit what I do now. It's, I think I used up all my memory. <laughs> Vote in every, yeah. I, I do exercise my right to vote every opportunity I get. And I try to encourage other people to go vote because, you know, if you don't vote, then you don't have the right to complain about the person elected. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and again, it, it, it goes back to engagement again, how engaged people want to be. It's very, very easy to complain, but it's harder to do something about it. Um, and, and one little example I use is my parents, you know, we've seen a lot of change in our lives um, and our history is so, so close behind us. Like this is in my lifetime. Our parents were brought into communities where they really didn't have a say in how their life was supposed to be. They didn't choose what language their children were going to be taught in. Um, they didn't get asked for their opinion when uh, settlement managers were making decisions or somebody in Ottawa made a decision without ever consulting them. So I'm from a generation that feels very compelled to be the voice for, for my parents, the ones that they, they didn't have. And I do have a mother, Rhoda Kavita, who was very much a woman ahead of her time and she was very engaged. But I think of many, many times that as a young mother that she didn't have that opportunity and those of her generation. So many of us of my age group and some older, I think, feel very compelled to be that voice for our ancestors that did not have that voice. Mm -hmm.